Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's Monday the 29th of July 2024. In some countries, it's known as National Manufacturing Week. So having to put, you know, those things into play, having to manufacture amazing goods, having to, um, you know, just look for products that helps revenue. That's what people are celebrating, Manufacturing Week. Anyways, on today's breakfast show, we have a lot in store for you. We'll be talking about the protests, safety and security concerns for protesters, and the IGP has issued guidelines. Much later on the show, we'll be discussing the World Hepatitis Day 2024, and we'll be addressing the global health issues. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. And that is why Henry Ford, as a founder of Ford Motor Company, he was an American entrepreneur and an engineer. Of course, that was how he founded the Ford Motor Company. But this morning, he's telling us obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. So the important thing is to always focus. Do not take your eyes off the goal. When you take your eyes off the goals, there's so many distractions that could just sway you out and then you forget what you were even trying to do in the first place. If you're always going to fixate on the things that are going wrong, then you'll never see the things that are going right. You will never be able to accomplish those goals. So this morning, as it's Mindset Monday, we're just trying to let you know that you need to focus. You need to have your eyes on the prize, on your goal, Forget about everything that is happening around you. And even if they are happening, all you have to do is ensure that you turn them over so you can accomplish those goals. So if you're doing something wrong and it just poses as a challenge or, or as an obstacle, all you have to do is look for a better way to do it again so you can finally accomplish those goals. So obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. But if you put your eyes on the price, if you ensure that your focus is on that goal you will just get everything that you want all right that's it that's it for our quote of the day we'll move over to some top trending stories this first one says sarah pursues cbn over unaccounted 100 billion naira dirty notes Sarah has filed a lawsuit against the CBN over the failure to account for 100 billion naira in dirty and bad notes and other large sums of cash held by the CBN since 2017. The suit also demands an explanation for missing funds, including 7.2 billion naira intended for the CBN Duce branch, branch construction and 4.8 billion naira for the renovation of the Abel Kuta branch. Serap seeks details on outstanding loans, including 1.2 billion naira granted to Enugu State in 2015 and 1.9 billion naira granted to Anambra State between 2015 and 2016. The lawsuit argues that transparency in accounting for these funds is crucial for public trust and aligns with legal obligations under Nigerian and international anti-corruption standards. Serap emphasizes that these allegations reflect significant violation of public trust and statutory responsibilities, urging the courts to enforce accountability and recover any missing funds. I remember having a conversation with um, uh, Kola Wale Oluwadare, who was the deputy director, or rather, who is the deputy director for Serap. And, you know, we had an extensive conversation on this. And something that he really highlighted was transparency and accountability. And that is what Serap and so many other um, CSOs are doing, ensuring that we bring these people, we let them know that we need them to be accountable. If we're not going to demand for what is rightfully ours, then they will just keep playing us. Or keep doing whatever they want to do knowing that we really do not care but when we let them know that we care of course we need to demand what is rightfully ours and that's one thing Sarah is trying to do um, they've written to them they've asked them to um, you know bring out the, the, the books let us know how you spent the money account for it and I know something I asked him at, at that time was what if nobody responds what if the government doesn't respond and of course they said we're going to take legal action and this is where we are now now I don't know what the court um, is going to do of course they've written 
speaking to them and i'm just hoping that well the nigerian government will just surprise us and say you know what this is how we spent the money and if we're saying that we're trying to fight corruption and there is no way we can fight corruption without account accountability when you're accountable you know that people are really looking at you people are looking at what you're doing and so you would not want to steal money you would not want to um be corrupt you would not want to turn a blind eye even when someone else is being corrupt it is important that we're able to build that trust. There is a trust deficit between the Nigerian people and the Nigerian government. And what better way to start to build the trust than having to be accountable, especially when it comes to things like this. If we're asking for a hundred billion naira in bad notes, where did that money go to? And it's so funny that even when you still go to the bank, you still see bad notes there. So if you're saying we took out all of that money, then why can't you account for it i think it's as simple as just saying this is what we use the money for you're seeing renovations of several branches how was the money spent you cannot say oh i am a leader and i'm not willing to be accountable no that is just you're just trying to be an like you're just trying to you know just use your authority in ways that benefit you or ways that pleases you but if you're leading people you need to carry them along and in carrying them along you have to be transparent you have to be accountable those are certain qualities you have to have integrity because integrity is even what makes you accountable and transparent in the first place those are certain qualities a leader must have and we're expecting that the nigerian government would also possess these qualities because why do we have people who are not willing to be accountable in any way, in any shape, in any form, and they just want us to be quiet? No, we are demanding for these things. We want to know it. And I'm hoping that, you know, the courts will uphold the law because, of course, it is a law. You need to let us know what you use this money for. So hopefully we'll get to find out more of that much later as the story progresses. Another top trending story this morning says desperate homes, businesses bypass meters in massive electricity theft. Rising el electricity tariffs in Nigeria driving many households and businesses to use illicit methods and to manage their utility bills. In Lagos, businesses like fabric shops are reported to bypass their prepaid meters by connecting directly to power sources, resulting in substantial cost savings but significant revenue losses for the electricity providers. Some individuals openly discuss meter bypassing and negotiate with officials to resolve issues or avoid penalties, often resulting to bribery. An investigation revealed the process of illegally tapping into power, including hiring electricians to modify connections and bypass meters. Residents using illegal connections are often aware of the risk, but feel compelled by high tariffs to avoid official billing. Routine inspections by electricity providers sometimes fail to detect these illegal connections if residents are cautious and manipulate their setups. The issue of energy theft is prevalent with significant losses for utility companies and persistent efforts by officials to combat the problem. First, theft is a wrong thing. It is illegal to actually steal. But, you know, let me play devil's advocate a little bit you have a high tariff something that used to be about 68 naira per kilowatt especially for band a customers which i am one of so let's let me talk about myself you have a tariff that was about 68 naira and then it's been moved up to over 200 naira per kilowatt that is almost about 300 percent increase on your electricity tariff and so of course you cannot use electricity the way you used to if you were having maybe two or three acs you probably have to just turn on one when it's necessary of which i understand that i understand the need to um look at your consumption and only consume what you need at the time but as of right now when we look at the makeup of nigeria's economy as a whole and we know that there isn't a lot of funds coming in businesses are struggling People are struggling. People can even barely put food on their table. Talk more about buy electricity that would maybe cool them or make sure that their fridges and freezers are turned on. And so they cannot, you know, have this luxury of electricity the way they would love to. So, of course, there's always going to be that 
loophole where they would want to have theft right they want to steal electricity because they're like you know what i cannot afford it nigeria is as difficult as it can be i'm still trying to keep my head above water i have so many bills so many things to do i have children to feed and their school fees are there i have house rent to pay and so it's just electricity let me just ensure that this part is sorted out like i said i am not going to say it is a good thing i am not going to stand for it theft is theft so it is bad it is illegal and you shouldn't be doing that but my point here is this is why the government needs to understand that if you do not give people the welfare they want they will take it away from you so now utility companies are losing money just because your tariff is high and I know that they're saying, oh, we need to remove the subsidy because we need that revenue when we don't even have enough money. I understand that. But other countries, they subsidize several things for the citizens. So what is, Nigeria subsi what, what is the Nigerian government subsiding for Nigerians? If you're not subsiding food, if, you, if you're not subsidizing food, rather, if you're not subsidizing food, you should be subsidizing health care. If you're not doing that education if you're not doing that electricity if you're not doing that fuel which obviously the subsidy has been taken away so there are several things that you need to understand when it comes to the welfare of the people and you need to give give that to them now like i said theft is theft it is not a good thing but you have to ensure that you're giving the people the welfare that they need so that they don't even they're not even driven to have to steal in the first place look at businesses a lot of businesses are shutting down because of the cost of doing business the business em environment is not even good enough the economy is not great it's not flourishing it's not sustainable they don't even people don't have enough money to go and patronize these businesses and that's why most of them are shutting down so many manufacturing companies so many international companies are leaving a lot of multinationals, and I think it's on one of our papers, a lot of multinationals are leaving the country right now because the cost of business, it is so expensive and you don't even have people with enough money, with that, you know, that spending power to just say, you know what, I want to go out and I want to buy this. We don't have that anymore. Now everybody has to calculate their bills. And of course, electricity is one of those bills and sometimes people just find their way. But my point here is, let me just circle back to ensuring that you're giving your people a good welfare package and if it's, that's from electricity why not just do something to ensure that you're not driving people to theft all right so our final top trending story well this one talks about, about the protest it says warn your children against protests and that is from Folasha Day Tinubu Ojo Folasha Day Tinubu Ojo, the daughter of President Bola Tinubu and Iyaloja, General of Lagos State, has urged Lagos market women to prevent their children from joining the planned August 1st hunger protest. In a viral video, she argued the Lagos State um, government has made progress and should be supported while calling out for patience with the federal government. Tinubu Ojo emphasized that protests in Lagos are counterproductive and potentially destructive, recalling previous damages caused by similar actions. She stressed that the new federal government should be given time to demonstrate its effectiveness before facing criticism. President Bola Tinubu has also engaged with various stakeholders to discourage participation in the upcoming nationwide protests, which are driven by economic difficulties and rising food prices. I know it's easy to come out and say, oh, do not um, participate in this protest. But when we're talking about hunger, when we're talking about economic difficulties, when we're talking about so many things that are just wrong, of course, you can't tell people how to express themselves. If you're saying do not allow your children to participate, those children, they also go to the markets. I mean, my brother was telling me yesterday and he was just talking about how a policeman was um, talking about the protest and um, the policeman was like you know what I can't even say so much because I am also here as well I also go to the market I also have bills to pay so it's not for a select few we're all going through this together and we just want the government to do something about it I know that most people will argue okay give give them more time but the current administration has been here for over a year 
And I think at some point, when you're transparent enough to let people know your plans, then they can be patient with you. You can say, give us more time. Be more patient. For how long? How long are we going to be patient for? That's the question. But if you let us know that, okay, these are our plans. These are the initiatives we're rolling out. And the next six months, we'll be doing this. And the next one year, we'll be doing this. And the next two years, this is where we're going to be. This is how we want to make Nigeria a progressive nation then people can rally around you and support you and say, you know what, let's all do this together. But every single day, food prices are rising like no man's business. Every single day, let's talk about housing. Housing is so expensive right now. That's why you're seeing people living under the bridges. People are living on the streets. So many children are out of school because parents cannot afford to pay their fees. They have to eat first, and we're still talking about food that is a basic necessity that people do not have. So there are so many things that are happening, and people just want to voice out, you know, express themselves, express what's going on, and hopefully the government will listen. I know that, you know, there are other ways, like I have always said here, I am not one for protest. I do not like protest. It's just, it's just a lot. And there's also the, the, the fear of it being hijacked. And so that's why I'm like, no, protest is not for me. I do not like it. But you cannot, you cannot beat a baby and tell the baby not to cry. You should still allow people to be able to express themselves. Or you could have just averted all of this in the first place and do what is right by the Nigerian people. I know that something someone has always said is the citizen, um, the office of the citizen is the highest office in the land. And that is what democracy is all about. So you need to listen to the citizens. If they say this is what we want, you have to give them what they want and what you think will make Nigeria progressive. So with this August 1st protest, I'm hoping that it doesn't, you know, the, the government will do something. Of course, now we're saying that the president is already having talks with stakeholders. So I'm hoping that, you know, there would be an address. There would be something, just something to help people to, to make them feel loved, to make them feel cared for, to make them feel heard. So hopefully that happens and then the protests you know the organizers just say you know what let's give the the government more time then we can do that but the the the, the crux of the matter the main thing is to ensure that you give the nigerian people what they want i don't think we're asking for too much nigerians are super resilient in any condition they find themselves they will still make headway they will still be happy they will still try as much as possible to be good but if we're asking for the basic amenities or the basic necessities of life, we just expect you to give us that. I'm talking about food security. I'm talking about infrastructure. I'm talking about development. I'm talking about healthcare. I'm talking about education. There are so many things. Well, let's start to fix Nigeria one piece after another. Somebody was telling me yesterday, a cab driver, and he said, since I was little, all we've been doing is roads, building and fixing roads. Why are we not doing any other thing? Why are we not having more developments in Nigeria? Insecurity is ridiculous right now. It is, it is almost like a thriving business for terrorists. Why are we not tackling that? So I think the Nigerian government really needs to look at what we need and start to do the right thing for the Nigerian people. And hopefully one day we'll get there and we'll say this has just been a thing of the past and Nigeria is better right now. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.